$450 brake upgrade kit versus $4,400 big brake kit. Does more expensive mean more better? Let's find out. I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, we made a show called Car Wars. The donut gang going against some of your favorite YouTubers like Chris Fix. Loser had to eat a very spicy chip. Very spicy, but very fun to watch. The hardest challenge was the VR third person driving. I almost threw up because I got motion sickness. <laughs> We bought two almost identical Nissan 350Zs and we've been modifying them to be fun daily drivers that you can take to the track. My Z gets a ton of really expensive parts and Nolan's car gets a bunch of cheap ones. We're gonna test them side by side and see which components are worth spending your hard earned money on. So far, we've installed coilovers and new wheel and tire combos on our twin 350Zs. And today, we're moving on to the brakes. We want to see what kind of results we can get from a really basic but still good brake upgrade versus a full Monty. Daddy, I'm going into credit card debt for this brake kit, brake kit. Look how much bigger yeah. my pads are. So these are my front pads. Size comparison, that's pretty enormous. The big brake kit doesn't necessarily mean more braking power, it's just that you'll be able to do harder braking for longer because the heat is being distributed over a larger area than mine. With these tiny little guys, I think I'm gonna have some pretty gnarly brake fade after stepping on them a lot of many, many times, a lot of many times. Also look at how much bigger the vents are on the Willwood kit versus Nolan's. A lot more air is gonna pass through those and it's gonna cool the brakes a lot better. We're just fighting heat and we are gonna come out on top. Honestly, I think his baller ass setup is gonna blow mine away. It's, this is honestly the best day of my life. No contest, which is better. <laughs> you never know. I mean, yeah, it looks like mine is almost certainly 1000% better, but let's just wait and see if the Willwood kit is really so much better that it's worth those thousands of dollars. <laughs> Brakes, big or small? That is a question. Today, We're we have the find answer. Out. When upgrading your brake kit, there are a handful of different pieces you can opt to replace. Rotors, pads, calipers, brake lines, and brake fluid. On high car, we're swapping out all of those. And the low car will do the same, except for calipers. Because new calipers are just too dang expensive for Nolan and his poor team. And all that together should make our brakes firmer and more consistent at the track. Upgraded rotors can help dissipate heat with more effective venting, added slots, and or increased surface area. Oh, me? Power tools, baby. Me? I'm just a f***ing car boy. We've got, what, 12 bolts here? I can't keep track of that in my head, so as we torque them, we'll mark them, and then we'll, once they're all marked, they're all torqued. Our brake rotor won't fit with this dust shield on there. To get it off, we could either take the whole hub off or do some custom engineering. The other part of being bigger is that a larger friction ring allows you to run a larger pad. Upgraded pads can be made with more heat tolerant materials and bigger pads also dissipate heat easier with their larger surface area. But in order to have bigger pads, you need bigger calipers. It needs force all across it. This is a single piston caliper. If you're pushing on the back of this pad with one piston, you don't have any force on the sides. So you need a big circle? No, you can't do that. So you do a few little circles. So this has pistons on both sides inside and behind that pad. And since this is a fixed rotor, without the sliding piece, this thing doesn't flex at all. So you get a really firm, really consistent brake pedal. We got the new Willwood 10. Hold on. Hello? What's up, babe? I'm at the shop. Yeah, the boys are here. Yeah, we're kicking it. Yeah, we're having fun. Yeah, we're building the high-low Zs. Oh. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> Well, uh, I think uh, we can arrange that. <laughs> yeah, I'll be home late. Mm -hmm. 
With all this other stuff, we also replace the brake lines. That's usually a part of a big brake kit uh, because stock lines are often this soft and durable and flexible rubber, which is great for daily driving and it's great for longevity, but it's not great for performance. Over time, these can bulge, especially with really high, heavy braking, and that gives you a squish in your pedal where you shouldn't have one. So to correct that, most big brake kits, including this Willwood kit, come with stainless steel lines. Once you got your other line in place, you break loose the OEM hard line with the line wrench, wrench right here, and then as quickly as possible, you're gonna shove it back on. So the reason that I leave the old line in there is because it's good to have reference points. If this line actually goes on the front, it could be too long and then it could get tangled in some of the working suspension components causing some pretty bad or catastrophic failures. All right, so we got all the brakes installed, all the lines on, we're ready to put our new fluid in and bleed them. So since we changed the brake lines, you're gonna have to bleed the brakes. Yeah, because all that brake fluid you saw dripping out of the lines has to be replaced by something, and that something is usually air. Every time I press the brake, Aaron's gonna be releasing air from the system. We do that at all four corners, and then our system will be free of air, and we can drive this thing. Uh, we don't have a bleeder here in the shop, so I went ahead and made one out of a can and a clear tube that we had here just like lying around. And we're tight. That should be it. How's it feel? Oh, dude, it's like, it's, it's so solid. It's like, yeah, I shouldn't be jamming it like that, should I? After your new pads and rotors are installed, you're still not done. You have to bed in the brakes. Oh, no. Here we go. Start at 60 miles an hour and lightly press on your brakes to get them up to temp. Then, get back up to 60 and stand on the brakes hard, down to around 10 miles per. Oh wow, that's better. Wow, that was really great. Then, get back up to 60 and do it again about 10 times. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Wow. This thing freaking gets down. Your brake rotors and pads are gonna get super hot and smell, just like nice. Nolan. If you don't bet in your brakes, you run the risk of having uneven pad deposition, which makes your rotors feel like they're warped. Well, Nolan's out there racing S chassis. Making already. friends. Making friends. He's already part of the JDM community. This might be another con. <laughs> your time. <laughs> yeah. If for you sure. want to go out and hang out with your friends, maybe don't do the big jobs. But hey, we made yeah. it through. Yeah. We're almost to the other side. We'll be out there making friends very soon. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be out there making friends. So for the test, we did the same 60 to 0 test from the last episode to see if there's any improvement in stopping distance. Uh, the brakes feel really good. I'm super impressed with how they work. Um, I mean, who, who knew it only took some more aggressive pads and a little better rotors, man. The main advantage of upgrading your brakes is not a shorter stopping distance. The main advantage is resisting brake fade. Brake fade is when your brakes get so hot that they become less effective or even fail completely. Uh, these brakes are definitely gonna fade quicker than those. Uh, so their brakes literally cost 10 times more, but I don't think they're gonna perform 10 times better. So we ran the 60 to zero test over and over and over to put as much heat and stress on our new brakes to see how they affected the stopping distance of each car. They definitely faded, but I don't know. These are worse circumstances you could throw at brakes, and they were pretty damn consistent. So, for what we paid, yeah, yeah, we can't good. really be yeah, uh, can't disappointed be about these. Look at uh, look at Nolan's. It's first, second, third, fourth, fifth is down here, and then it got kind of consistent, I guess, after a while, and then. Uh, well, you saw what happened on the last one. <laughs> so with our 60 to zero test, we were able to shave off about five feet from the stock brakes, which only goes to show that uh, upgrading your brakes doesn't really make you stop sooner. Which is why we also did an endurance test. One marker, pretty consistently after about five laps, and then on the sixth lap, Aaron stood on the brake, and we stopped like 10 feet past. We're like, oh, <laughs> it's about to happen. And then a couple laps later, we caught on fire. So when they go, they go. We had to replace the pads after that torture test because we completely dusted them. High car did not catch on fire. No. Nope. The brakes barely faded yeah. at all. 
All right, so does more expensive mean more better, James? Absolutely. <laughs> In this case, 1,000%. So yeah, obviously the Willwoods are better. Way better. Way better, I mean. I wanna acknowledge the aesthetic gains mm -hmm. from those big mm -hmm. brakes. We have some really cool wheels yeah. on the high car, but seeing those big old it, beefy boys behind it, it's like, Oh man, that dude knows what's yeah. up. One negative about the big brake kit is you can't do it and keep your stock wheels. It's just one more thing to consider. So Nolan, which brake kit would you buy? The Willwoods are too expensive. They're yeah. so, so good, but that's too much money. Honestly, just the rotors, pads, and the steel braided lines on my car made a big difference. And I don't feel bad about saying that I wouldn't get the more expensive one. If this episode gets 10 million views, we'll give Nolan a raise so he can start answering the would you buy it question a little bit more. These are honestly. my, no, this is honestly, I don't have any money to buy this shit. <laughs> you like, don't either, so shut up. like, I, will, I wouldn't buy lunch. So I would go with the cheaper brake kit, the low kit, if you will. Solid upgrade. Solid, solid upgrade. The high car is like now, right? This episode is where the disparity yeah. really starts to become apparent. I mean, they're two different cars now. Right now we have way more tire and way more brake mm -hmm. than we do power. So you can just drive the piss yeah. out of that thing and stay out of trouble. You're fine. It's so fun to drive right now. I can't wait till we ruin it with more power. <laughs> <laughs> more power, baby! Uh, in the next episode, we're gonna see what's the difference, a nice aftermarket LSD or, or welding your differential together. If you haven't seen the first two episodes of this show, make sure you go watch them. We did wheels and tires and coilovers. Mm -hmm. Make sure to tune in every Monday for the next however many Mondays. If you like this, send it to your friend. If you hate it, send it anyway, it doesn't matter. Follow Donut at Donut Media for all that sweet, sweet BTS and the dankest memes in the automotive world. I love you. Be nice. See you next time. We can't nail this. Yeah. All right. Be nice. I love you. See you next time.